Grandma's 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 Grandma's
and she will be reading an excerpt from her new book and we'll have some conversation with her when we get this apple galette in the oven. So uh, anyway, Sharon, uh, thanks so much for coming. I know you're a busy mom and a hockey <laughs> mom and, and you busy. work and <laughs> all of that stuff. So really, I really appreciate you coming because I have never even heard of an apple galette until oh, wow. we were tossing around ideas. And of course, we have to take into consideration how long something takes to... Uh, to prepare just for the show because we kind of want to keep it to an hour and a half although I've made bread on the show a few times so yeah. you're chopping up the uh, stuff the, ahead of time yeah, yeah you're trying to actually we did it in real time went live three different times when you're making bread wow so get it to, to the rising point come back in an hour when it's, it's, it's raised a process. and <laughs> put, you know put it in the pans See you in a half or a half hour an hour whatever I was making and yep. then you bake it and and they have a little look at the final product awesome all right i'm happy so, to be here that's wonderful and i'll let you take it from here you're uh, everybody should have the recipe the recipe is on the facebook page went on up there at 1 30 and it's also on the website tunesandwoodenspoons.com and uh so we'll start with the pie crust because we have to put it in the fridge right yeah just for a few minutes while yeah you're while you're the making the filling yep all right so we're gonna wash your hands first yes We'll do that. You go ahead, Sharon. You're on the main, the main stay. So I'll have to have a different view today. Nice to see all you guys. Hello, hello, Arlen. McPhee. Oh, I know Arlene McPhee. I bet you she's back home in Ontario now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's fine, and I'll wash my hands. You can start, and I will. So we're going to measure the ingredients. The apple galette is actually really easy to make. Pretty much anybody can make it. It's just kind of like a simple version of an apple pie. It's like, a, 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 a as you say, it's rustic. Yeah, it so is. So that it's got the rough edge, and it's okay. It so it right? doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to taste good. Yes, there you go. And just for anybody who wants to know that, I... Um, she said uh, in, in her or back and forth in Messenger that it's nice in the recipe to have some caramel sauce and some ice cream with it. So earlier this week, I had made some bread pudding for my visitors. And so I made the caramel sauce and uh, just... So okay. we're going to drizzle that on. We're going to drizzle that on with the ice cream. Yes. And uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to be on internet at all for anybody else in the house. So we'll just have to keep it. So we're gonna measure it. out our dry ingredients. Okay, so, so I'm gonna push the camera down. Okay. So everybody can see what Sharon is doing. So we're gonna put a cup and a half of flour. You tell me what to do at any point. Just okay. give me the, the goods. So our sugar. I'm going to put her, oh, look, look at these awesome wooden spoons. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this, but remember the guy that was on here? Um, Kevin Fowley was on here uh, with his uh, you know, tasting spoons and the wooden spoons that he makes and the bowls, the burl, the tree there. He was on here a few weeks ago when Edna McDonald was singing and uh, went to see him this week with, uh, with somebody who was picking up some product and he presented me with these wooden spoons measuring spoons as a gift i don't know if he makes them normally but i'm just delighted I love them. they're so, so nice to have it i know i, I just I love, love it and so we've got our dry in there I'm just gonna mix it around and while you're doing that i'm gonna i'm gonna measure out your one quarter cup i put a a bunch of water and a couple of ice cubes and put it in the fridge about an hour ago. So I'm gonna measure out a quarter cup of cold water for her to use in her crust. So I just break up the butter into little pieces. Okay, there is your one or quarter cup of water. Awesome. And we already preheated our oven to 350. Uh, so oven is at 350. Do you make a lot of pies? I don't. Actually, 
making pies is one of the things I really don't like to do. Is that right? <laughs> and of all the things that one can make, oat cakes and pies, for some reason, I will make the most intricate dessert, but I do not like making oat cakes and pies. <laughs> and I don't know why. The kids love pies. My husband loves pies, but... I will make them on occasion, but not that yeah. often. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you if if you are making a pie, is this basically the, the recipe that you would use, similar to this? Yeah, similar to this. Um, but uh, actually, a lady, a couple of years back, uh, she makes phenomenal pies by the name of Hermina Van Softon. Oh, yes. And I spent a day at her house one day, and we made apple pies. And she puts all of her ingredients in the freezer. So her flour, her her butter, everything's in the freezer. Really? And you know what? It makes the best crust. Oh it really gosh. does. Well, you know, a little bit about Hermina. Hermina uh, is just noted for her bread as well. Yep. And she brought the recipe from Holland. Oh, wow. Yes, she was, uh, Hermina was Hermina Hookshorst. And uh, they came from Holland, yeah, that was her last name before she married uh, Teddy. And um, she just makes loads and loads and loads, not so much anymore, yep. but, but that was one of the things. You know, her, son, her, her son, you know, Mike from Mike's yeah. E-Bikes, e he was telling me about his mom's bread, and that's the absolute best bread in the world. Yeah. And how she, her, one of her daughter-in-laws, she gave them... She went with her, just similar to what you did. Yes. Went with her to learn how to make this bread that yep. she that she took over the recipe from her parents in, in Holland, and, uh, and that's best what we all need to do. Ever. Everybody needs to show somebody else how yes. to do it. Yes. So this is kind of what we're looking for. Yeah. Made a little mess there. Now we're just gonna add our water. Do you want a fork? Yes, for that? please. Yeah. There you go. So I like to work with my hands. So you'll see it on my hands. <laughs> over a little bit so you're just going to want to mix it around till it kind of comes together and you can you can feel it coming together and you're just going to want to make a ball might be a little bit too much water there it's a little wet so i might have to put a little bit of extra water down with extra flour down i'll give you a little bowl of flour to use for for uh, rolling out so there it is basically Bring it into a ball. So we'll put this to the side. I'll be your little minion. So we're actually gonna roll it out onto the parchment right now. Oh, right on the parchment, yep, because it's easier. Then you don't have to transfer it. So we'll put the parchment down. Should I open up the parchment yep, a little wider? Open it up. So just kind of make it into a, a ball, flatten it down, and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why it's called rustic. I like it. Put a little bit of flour in the rolling pin. I'm just going to roll it. You don't want to make it too thin, but you want to have a, you don't want to have it too thick either. So this, are you, are you're not putting the dough in the fridge then? We are. We're going to put it in okay. the fridge on the cookie sheet. Ready okay. to go. Okay. Okay. Do you mind if it, I use the stoneware? You can use whatever you want. Okay. Okay. I just naturally go for my stoneware so pan, but I do have a metal one. That's about it. So okay. we just take it. We're going to move it onto the cookie sheet and we're going to put it in the fridge. Yep, that's perfect. Why we make our uh, filling. Okay, sounds like a tie. I'm just gonna go over and wash my hands again really quickly. Thank God it's rustic. <laughs> Finding room in that fridge can be an issue. Let me check how everybody's doing. Hi everybody. Love Galettes. I had to tune in. I've missed the name. Hi, Donna Mae Cunningham. She does make it look easy, doesn't she? And everybody <laughs> just cringes at pie crust, right? <laughs> so Sharon is just peeling the apples and uh, all of that. Hi, Margie McNeil. And Mary Ann Bukwe. Another bowl I can just put the peelings in. 
Yes, here we go. Perfect. Just so I'm not making a big mess here. Yep. Colleen Power. Lots. There's only about 500 people watching. Oh, that's not many at all. 500. <laughs> See, they're all here. I'm used to, to either... only my boys. <laughs> <laughs> There's, they're all here to watch you, Sharon, or oh. to listen to Nelda. To Nelda. This is awesome. Christine. Holly. Oh, Holly, thank you. Yeah, lots of people are loving the cookbook. That's so nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I was saying earlier to Mary Jan, it does Hi, well. Hi, Ann Falconer. <laughs> I had a message from my sister-in-law this morning saying that her uh, her aunt in Sydney, uh, Linda Shepard, was, uh, had, had mentioned that she got apples and she was waiting to uh, make the galette with us today. So that's always nice. Hello. And she's, what is your aunt? No, it's uh, my sister-in-law's aunt, actually. Okay. She called me today and, and she had Ye mentioned. Oh, she is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We're going to watch how the chef does the apples. Look how oh. fast she does that. Don't you know? She's been doing this a while. <laughs> <laughs> my, actually, my, my daughter-in-law, uh, Mitchell's wife, Laura, yes. absolutely. If she's having a gathering, I ain't doing any dips. I'm just getting them from she, Sharon. Yeah, she gets my dips. <laughs> yeah. um, so how many? Uh, so you're, we've got five here, so let's check out to see if this so is So that's a four-cup measure way over there. Okay, so we're going to move that here. So I, I want just, to make sure they can see no, you yeah, chopping so. it up. So I usually just take it and chop like this. Okay. And take the core. And then I just do nice slices. Oh. <laughs> How I wish I could do that. I'd be minus a couple of fingers. Oh. And you've been doing it for a while. It's, it's pretty easy. My kids are big on um, apples with caramel sauce. Oh, I bet. So we chop a lot of apples in our house. And that pretty much gives you the whole apple. Yeah. Doing it that yes, way. it really does. Yeah. It's easy. So while I'm putting this in there, maybe you could put the other ingredients in on top of the apples. Oh, great the idea. Vanilla. Great idea. And Cinnamon. So it's all gonna get mixed around anyway. Third cup of brown sugar. I'll bring my stuff over here. And that's give or take. If you taste your apples and your apples are pretty sweet, you could go a little less. And if you use Splenda, you could use Splenda. Like it doesn't yes. have to be. If you don't have brown sugar. Use white sugar. It's it's not really not gonna make a whole big difference. So. Uh, third cup of brown sugar. I'm just going to toss it in on top? Yep. Okay. Because we're going to toss it all around when they're all in there. Okay. A teaspoon of vanilla. I'm just going to guess it a teaspoon. Yes. That's Sharon does me. not measure. She learned from her mother and she does everything in the, from the measure in the palm of her hand. Yeah. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. Well, you know what? I just want to use these oh, new measuring spoons. It's awesome. There's nothing better than having something that has a little bit of a uh, little bit of a story to it. Oh, I love it! I love it! I love it! This actually, I'll just do that. A little bit of core there. And it asks for that's two teaspoons of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of vanilla, and a third cup of brown sugar. And it's asking for two teaspoons of melted butter. So this is a two tablespoon measure, and I'm just going to put it in here. I'm going to put it in the oven for about, or in the microwave for about 15 seconds. And I always find this kind of a quick, kind of a quick dessert just to prepare if you're, you're looking something easy for, you know, just having something for supper. Like I said, my kids, they love apple pie, but I don't like making it. <laughs> and I, I love making pie. I do. And I'm just going to pour the melted butter over everything. Yep. And a dash of salt. So I'm just going to go. Boom, boom. Yep. And then okay. we're good. Will I start mixing it up? Yeah, sure can. And it's, if you don't have enough room, so well, you know yep. what? I think I'll pour, pour it in, in the big bowl. 
And I might have done the apples quicker than other people. I'm kind of used to doing it. So just do them at your own pace. Just get them all coated. Yep. This is it. Oh, doesn't it smell good? Is there uh, anything better than cinnamon? I love apples and cinnamon. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, what do you think? That's perfect. Okay. Yep. Now, so maybe we'll just get a cloth and we'll wipe that down. Let's do that. These great dishcloths. I love those. I know. I got. I got this dishcloth. Got two of them from a follower that came to my house this week. Oh, nice. From Ontario. They just knew that I lived on East Street, <laughs> and they were traveling Random through people coming, <laughs> <laughs> traveling through Nova Scotia. And she said, "Well, I know it's East Street." And uh, her name is Lisa Stonehouse. Yeah. So anyway, Cecil was working outside. I suppose I should put the camera up oh. so you can talk. We can t nothing worse than hearing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So anyway, uh, Lisa and her husband were going around Nova Scotia, and she knew that I lived in Port Hood, and she's just an avid follower every weekend. Yeah. And. Uh, Okay, and uh, so anyway, I um, I was at the co-op shopping for groceries, and Cecil saw a car go by and slow down and back up, and then just come into the end of the lane, <laughs> and uh, our names are on our mailbox. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, they rolled roll down the window, I guess, or something like that, and so Cecil went down and talked to them, and you know, as in any home, I think, in Cape Breton, come in, come in. Come in, come, come in, in come, come in, come in. And oh no, the husband said, no, no, we just wanted to, just, she wanted to see the house and she kind of recognized it. And she had, when we had done that little trek to the beach, uh, she saw that and uh, just everything was kind of looking familiar to her. So anyway, she, she came in and she was sitting at the table and her husband was standing. He had been sitting for a long time behind the wheel and they, and, uh, so anyway, Cecil called me at the co-op, and I'm just leaving the co-op. And he said, there's visitors here. That's all he said. He didn't even tell you who it <laughs> he was. He didn't tell me who it was. He probably didn't know. Probably didn't know. <laughs> and uh, he's, not, he's not used to these terms, followers, or anything like that. <laughs> and so we came in. We saw a white car out there, and so we came in. And, and uh, she's sitting on the chair in the kitchen. Oh, my God. It was so sweet. Oh, my God. Oh. She was sitting. She had her cookbooks. She had bought a couple of cookbooks. It's just so sweet because, you know, we're yeah. just plain old simple folks. Exactly. And to see, see somebody just it's see so the excited. kitchen. Yeah. See in the kitchen <laughs> and whatever. But, oh, my God. I just, I was giggling because it was just so sweet. It was so sincere. But anyway, the, 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 the whole story is she had made a couple of uh, dish cloths. Dish yeah. and, and had given them to me that day. So I've been using them, Lisa, if you're... If you're still traveling, I love them and thank you very awesome. much. So we're ready for the pie crust? Yep, we're ready for the pie crust. Well, God, let's hope that it made the trick, made the trip into this <laughs> packed fridge. Okay, I'll let you take it off the pan. Oh, we don't even need to take it off the pan. Oh, we okay. can leave it on the pan. Wow, that's, that's heavy, eh? Yes, yep. <clears throat> I find that the stoneware pan works really well for me and my propane stove. Yep. It just... Uh, I just love it for, for that. And that's know? the thing. When you find what you like, yes. it doesn't matter if it's 50 years old. The, actually, the older, the better, usually. Yes, I, I know. know. my bread pans are my mother's. Aww. Yeah, they're old black bread pans, and my husband looks at them and he goes, they're disgusting. And I'm like, they're not. They're just old. Like, they're, they're yes. just... We put, yeah, I love it. That's what my it. mom cooked bread in them for years. There's nothing wrong with them. They just look old. They look old, and they've been well used and seasoned. They're very seasoned. You know? <laughs> Okay, we're gonna watch what she's doing here. I'm turn that down so you can see her. So we're just gonna pour the apples on. Now, if I was doing this for somebody else, I would probably make them really nice and really, you know, make sure all the apples are in or all face little, the same all way. The same okay. way. But all I really do is this. I take it in and I just kind of pleat it over. Yep. You just edges. kind of pleat it together. Like I said, it's rustic, so it's not supposed to look pretty. 
but it's going to taste awesome. It tastes delicious. Now, how when you're cooking yep. the, this, and and what is your done? Um, I take feel. A, I take a little knife and I do that. If the apples are cooked, we're done. We're done. Okay. Yep. Because I know there seems to be any time I ever get apple pie in a restaurant, or whatever, they're still kind of hard. You want to know why? Why? because they used, most restaurants buy bags of apples that are already done and in the sauce. So they're oh. just taking those and putting them in and they're never fully cooked really. They're oh. still cooking it in the pie, but they never seem to get that. I know, I yeah. didn't know that that was the reason or why. Or the canned apple pie filling, the same thing. Yeah. Like, there's still a little bit of like yeah. hardness in Hardness, them. I don't, I don't. I like my apples to be I know, right soft. soft. Through. If it's not soft, I don't want it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you want to make a little egg wash there? I'll make a little egg wash. So I'm I have egg an egg on. here, and I'll I'll put a, a little about a tablespoon of water with that, and um, and I tell you, I like to do this. I used to, I like to take the cinnamon because I love cinnamon. Yes. And I put an extra little sprinkle on top. Good stuff. <laughs> Everybody has their own little thing that they do that may not be in the recipe, you know? Yeah. Okay. And Sharon has, uh, what do you call it? That the sugar that you have with you? So it's a decorator sugar, so it's just like a coarser sugar. You can see it there. It's just bigger than the regular sugar. Can you put it right up to the camera? Sure. So they can see what it is. There we go, this way. <laughs> and it's and it's So it's just, decor it's just decorator sugar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's thicker than the regular sugar because the regular sugar sometimes disintegrates and you can use regular sugar no problem it's all about the taste yeah it doesn't matter what it looks like so you're just going to egg wash all okay. around and we're going to sprinkle some sugar on it i'm slower than you sharon no it's okay <sighs> i'm so used to doing things the kids are eating it quicker but then i get it out of the oven so <laughs> yeah and the same with the apples. As I'm cutting them, they're taking chunks. So yes. I think I might have five, and then all of a sudden there's three. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. I love that this is just so easy. I was reading the recipe, I'm saying. I'm all about easy yeah. desserts. They can taste good and just be quick and easy. Yeah. Okay, yep. and you're gonna sprinkle some sugar. And then we're just gonna sprinkle. I buy the sugar at the bulk burn and the uh, yes, and the bulk I section. love the bulk burn. That's it. So now it's gonna bake for, at three fifty for thirty to forty minutes. Yep. I'll just tuck this around a little bit because there are gonna be some juices that come out of it. Yeah. And the joy of the parchment it's easy for cleanup. Oh yes, that's once I start using oh, parchment. No. In the oven she goes. In the oven. Here you go, people. That's how quick and easy it is. It looks so good and it smells so good. Okay, I'll set the timer for, what did I set it for? 35? 30 I'd say 30 minutes. 30? Okay. Yep. And then we'll see how it's, it might need an extra five or 10 minutes, but usually about 30 to 40 minutes does it. Okay, I'll set it for 30. And uh, we'll, uh, We'll have some um, tea and some of the pie a little later. Oh, that sounds and good to I'm me. I'm just going to show, uh, oh, I have it over here for those um, who've made the, the uh, Mama's Caramel Sauce with me before. Uh, it's really good sauce, but I'll warm that up when we're going to have that. And mm -hmm. I have a scoop of vanilla ice cream. That looks really good. It's, that's the easiest sauce in the world, and I've never, I've tried different ones. I just, I go back to easy all the time. So, um, so now I'm just going to get around the table here. I do have a lot of things to talk to you about today and that we'll have after we have our tea. Hello to Rob Roy, Darlene Nelson.
It might be your new way for making pies, she says. <laughs> <laughs> so much easier. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, a lot less work. So uh, anyway, we are here, and I'm just going to introduce you to my cousin. Um, oh, hi, Ann Doyle. Thank you very much. That's awesome. And you, how did you, oh, Debbie Musselman made the salsa this week. How did you like it? Because uh, that recipe is not my recipe, but it's one I enjoy. And that was my hairdresser. She served me salsa one day uh, uh, back a couple of years ago, and I fell in love with her salsa. So uh, I asked her if I could share the recipe, and she said, yes, yes, okay. All right, Sharon, Jenny Ryan says, Sharon makes the best cheesecake. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Frances Corston. Frances Corston was my neighbor across the road. She was a Vanden Hogan. So, hi, Frances over there at Antigonish. Oh, uh, no, it does smell. Cause, okay, I'll stop reading. I need to introduce my most favorite person in the world, and that is Donelda McDonnell. And Donelda is right here beside me and uh, in my living room. And there she is. Hi, Donelda. <laughs> She's just a, a little on the on the nervous side. So um, Nelda, I call her Nelda. Uh, Nelda and I were born on in the same hospital on the same day, uh, and her father and my mother were brother and sister. So they they were in one room having a baby, and I was born in the other room so uh, all throughout our life we've sh we've shared the same birthday of February 17th and uh, I and, and and Nelda so graciously shared the year of our birth <laughs> in a comment I was saying okay you're not supposed to do that on Facebook but anyway <laughs> that's all right so this is um, I'm so proud to introduce to you uh, Donelda McDonnell and I want to talk a little bit about Donelda first before I give her the floor. Uh, Donelda has been a craftsperson all her life and she is the daughter of uh, her mother was Annie Margaret and her grandmother was was it Ellen Beaton? Doyle. Doyle. Ellen Doyle, who was a tailor down in Marble Coal Mines. And of course, she passed on uh, that gift of sewing and everything to her daughter, Annie Margaret. And Annie Margaret, of course, passed it on to her children, especially the, the girls. And uh, Donelda, in particular, who has been a, a seamstress and a, a, a craftsperson for, for many, many years. But one of her other gifts, uh, forever has been her writing style and in her short stories that she never really published. She might put a couple out here and there, or send it to somebody or whatever. So uh, with the nudging and prodding of a, of a very good friend of hers, Joan Ferguson in Mabu, uh, she, pardon me? Nag. <laughs> she convinced uh, Nelda that you need to, to publish this and, and anybody who she, you know, reached out to said the same thing. Those stories need to be shared. They are beautiful, beautiful stories of home and, uh, um, you know, just talking about square dancing in one story called The Dance and another short story is talking about a, a coat that her mother made from her from an old coat that she had. It's called My Little Fur Collar. And uh, there's about, uh, how many stories are in the book, Nelda? Um, there's 10 chapters, but one is a recipe. One, and one is a recipe. <coughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, I think you'll see over on her on the chair there some of the crafts that Nelda makes. She, she's a quilter, and she makes uh, dolls, Molly Darling dolls. For years and years and years, she's made uh, costumes for events. She gave me, do you remember, and uh, some of you people are maybe around my age, do you remember little Lulu in the comics? Well, Nelda made me little Lulu doll many years ago. <laughs> Look at little Lulu, if you, any of you remember her. Isn't that so sweet? And she sits on a shelf in my, in my family room. So um, a much gifted uh, person. So 
wouldn't you know it, she started putting her collection of stories together a couple of years ago and uh, working at self-publication, which is really hard and uh, a lot of work. And so her book that she just got is called The Weaving of My Tartan Heart. Now, Donelda, anything she makes or writes or prints or sews or whatever has a little Cape Breton tartan heart in, every, in, in the corner of anything that she does. And uh, so this is called The Weaving of My Tartan Heart. It's available on Amazon and it's available on Friesen's book uh, publishing company's page as well. And she has some, of course, on her own. And here is her box of books, which wouldn't you know it, we're born on the same day and we get our books in the same week. So Nelda, I'm going to turn this over to you. So um, we're, we're, uh, we're going to uh, open the box. Open the box. Open the box, open the box. I think the first thing I have to do before I forget is to thank Mary and Duncan and yourself. This never would have happened without our first our first cousin, um, Mary McDonnell. Mary McDonnell and Duncan McDonnell. And out in BC. Our first cousins out in BC helped very, very much. I'm, I told Mary Janet at one point that if my body was found, Mary did it because I'm very frustrated to work with. I have no computer skills. And uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people ask me how I did, what's the cover? I cut up a wool blanket and I was actually gonna mail it to Mary because I, did, I didn't know what else to do with it. Anyway, that's the cover. That's and the, the cover, and I have a copy of the book so Mary, too. thank you so much. You've been so patient and so kind. Anyway, here's the box. The box of the book. And it's not that I haven't seen the, bo the book, but it's just, this is the first box that I'm opening. It's exciting. And it is. It is. <laughs> it's very exciting. Let me take one. I can see my head on that, but it doesn't matter. This is the book, The Weaving of My Tartan Heart, Danelle de Macdonelle. And look, there's her little tartan heart. And this little picture up here. Anybody who knows Rodney McDonald and Mabu, the fiddle player, that's his fiddle. Guess what? They're my step dancing shoes. Oh. And she gave me that picture. It's a big picture. She gave it to me years ago. So, uh... Anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Easy read. All of the pictures in there, just pretty, pretty nice. And she is going to read uh, an excerpt from the book. But um, before, you, before you start to read, Nelda, how did you know you had a, a, a writing gift? Or was there anybody who just gave you that little nudge to, to do it when you were young, you know, when you started writing. The first uh, time that I can recall is um, one year, Sally Rankin, she would be the mother of Mary Lorette, and Judy and Janet, they're local gals and, that we know. Yeah, and also she'd be the... She was grandmother to the Rankins. Yeah, exactly. The Rankin family, the singing Rankins, yes. So for whatever reason, she was substituting. And uh, I, I can still see her at the desk, but I can't see around the room. So I'm not quite sure what, what uh, room, it, what school it was in. It might have been in the, in the portables or whatever. But anyway, she gave us an assignment to do, and, and I, I did it. And so then the next day she came in. And I can still see her walking up beside, and she went behind the desk, and she held this paper. What, what grade was this again? Well, I don't really remember, but I mean, like four probably, or five. Yeah, or? it was probably ten or something. You like were ten that. years old, okay? Probably. And uh, <clears throat> oh my God, she said we have a writer in the class, and of course I'm probably not even paying attention. And and uh, she read my my little story. It had to be a full page. And the assignment was to pick something uh, and to write something about it, an inanimate object. So I picked a penny 
And so I wrote where the penny had been and, you know, it, fe it fell down the drain pipe and then somebody stuck it up their nose and, you know, it was in a puddle and of course we found it and took it to Jerome Doyle's store to buy <laughs> candies. <laughs> and it was, it just went everywhere and everywhere and I don't even remember what else. But anyway, she was the one who told me, you are a writer. So if I was like, okay. <laughs> You know, back in those days, if somebody gave you a, a compliment, compliment you, you didn't know how to take it. Or believe, whatever. Yeah, that. And yeah. Plus, you believed them. And so, anyway, I, I don't recall writing anything else significant for a long time. Um, but over the years, you know, I wrote quite a bit. Uh, one, of the, one of the stories in here is uh, <clears throat> a story about Molly McLean. Uh, who owned the village tea room in Port Hood, and uh, I and my purpose, uh, and I mention it somewhere in there, is to listen to your elder people so that you know their history. So anyway, I I composed a poem about her life, and uh, she lived to be ninety seven, so that's almost a hundred years. And of, it is absolutely a beautiful poem. Ah, it really is. you're so nice. No, no, it, it truly is. So, uh, which story are you going to read from today? Well, I'm not sure. Does anybody have a, a suggestion? What did we well, decide? I, I think the little fur collar was maybe something that would resonate with a lot of people okay. and their mothers, right? I want everybody to know that I've dedicated this book to Joan Campbell from Ferguson Home. I have uh, coined the gentle nag because... <laughs> In the beginning of COVID, she um, started saying to me, Oh, Danelda, I know you have stories. And she's so gentle and everything. I'm yeah. like, go away, Joan. <laughs> For months, I said, go away, Joan. So, so, yeah, so what should I... So, just, you pick up... I thought you had that ready. Okay, one second. I want the first story that's on there. I... Uh, kind of make fun of your brother-in-law Gerald because he I did sewing for people all, a lot and uh, he used to bring me his pants to fix and I used to um, you have to speak up loudly I used to do all kinds of bad things to his clothes <laughs> so his little girls just would go absolutely crazy uh, here it is here it is okay uh, over that, I'd put a big pants, big big polka dotted patch on the rear end, and then sew the <laughs> zipper open and whatever. So he's mentioned in one of the stories. So this one, this is the one. That's the one. My little fur collar. Do, do I push up there, or what do I do? I can show them. This is the, the one story called "My Little Fur Collar," and I I don't know, you know, just. Read until the timer goes. Will you see if they can hear me? Because I don't know. Yeah, if, uh... well, so you have to speak loudly. Okay. Okay. So this story is uh, one that's already been posted on on uh, on Facebook back way back because everybody was singing and dancing and playing guitars and making cinnamon buns and I didn't do any of those, so I put a picture on. I put a story on, and uh, it just I couldn't. I couldn't keep up to all the comments. So anyway, this story is called My Little Fur Collar, and uh, it goes like this. My mother was very innovative. She had to be. There were few luxuries to make my mother's life easy. She graciously accepted this fact and was very creative in her ability to give her family what she could not buy. I appreciate all she did, and I know I never told her. My family lived on Back Street in Mabu, Cape Breton, officially now known as Highland Street, where every home had between five and 13 children, many of them as poor as we were. We weren't poor at all. We were a family of eight children, plus two parents, three girls, and five boys. Several families had a dozen children. It was not unusual for 50 kids to pour out onto the short street each morning. Kids biking, skipping, fighting, climbing trees, and playing hopscotch were everywhere. 
Used coats and boots were passed around from family to family, child to child. Many relatives had left Canada to work in, the Bo to work in Boston, where the multi-talented girls were high in demand. They could cook, clean, bake, sew, <clears throat> and take care of children. Better economically situated, many Bostonian families didn't recycle uh, their used items at home. Therefore, bulging suitcases were sent from the Boston states uh, for us. Once they arrived in Mabu, the perfectly good clothes were jealously fought over, the older and stronger kids always getting the best stuff. Life was so different in those days. It was during a time when children always went outside on winter mornings and stayed out all day long. We were concerned if we came back into the house to change out of our wet clothes, we would have to stay in. We did not have snow suits, but wore layers and layers of pants and sweaters to keep us warm on the hills behind our house in Mabu. There were no modern technologies. I could hold my pee for a record amount of time. Then our mother would call us in because she had made a big supper with lots of homemade dishes. While we were playing all day, she had been working. Aside from the regular condiments such as homemade mustard pickles and green tomato chow chow, there would always be fresh bread and biscuits with stew and dumplings or a roast dinner with thick gravy. My favorite dish of all was my mother's pumpkin preserves made with whole cloves in thick sweet syrup. She would sit at the kitchen table and cut the perfectly shaped squares of pumpkins to make the pretty orangey preserves dotted with little brown cloves. There were no appliances to conveniently cut the peeled slices of pumpkin into the tiny squares, just a sharp knife, a cutting board, and lots of patience. When the bottles were filled and the covers were cooling to pop, uh, she would put them on the window sills and admire her own handiwork. Today, there are kitchen appliances to chop up and mince the woody pulp to make the same dessert. I love the taste of them. They still remind me of her sitting there and her labor of love. And here's a little quilted picture that I did of preserves on the windowsill. And a little heart in the corner. But she was determined to give these babies everything they needed. She would take apart used clothing to be recycled for myself or for one of my siblings. My sisters and brothers sit with me on the gray and red tile floor covered with newspapers. The floor is freshly scrubbed and polished. That flooring was later changed. I say that because here's, here's another quilted picture uh, of, that, of that room. Um, <clears throat> on the warming oven, oven of the old Enterprise uh, wood stove are apple pies and freshly baked brown raisin bread, the sweet aroma filling the room. The atmosphere deliciously becomes real to me again as I write this description. description. Hanging on the door casings are several little dresses that she made for my little sister, Anita. One dress is mauve and yellow and uh, and yellow, and the other is red velvet with a large white collar. My mother looks sad as she talks to herself, and I always try to get close enough to hear who she is scolding, you know, when we talk to ourselves. Clyde Nunn's soothing voice comes over CJFX on the old-fashioned radio on the little shelf behind the stove. He is reminding the mothers to be sure to put a little more water on the potatoes, which he pronounces paredes. His deep, reassuring voice is always timely as my mother goes to check the steaming vegetables and indeed, she agrees, they have nearly dried up. I can still remember when it was my turn to have a new coat, new Sunday coat. The year is 1963 and I am 11. The skill of my mother used to recraft her own Melton woolen coat was magical to me. First, she opened up the seams and separated all the sections until it looked like a pattern again. Next, she reversed each piece of the material, then cut them a little bit smaller. And finally, she sewed the pieces together again 
so it became a miniature version of her adult coat, less a collar. My mother thinks hard as she sits with her coat on her lap. There will be a logical sequence to the order in which she takes apart and remakes the same project. She opens up the seams and sorts the pieces of material that recently were her coat. Once detached, the sleeves are placed on one side of her chair, the buttons are saved in the yellow plastic bowl with the hooks and eyes, and strands of thread are wound onto a little piece of cardboard. The thread will be saved in a small tin can inside a yellow plastic bowl and used later for hand stitching. I wonder if people can hear me. Yes, they can. You sure? Smaller pieces of fabric are saved. Uh, okay, wait a minute. As the threads holding the coat together are slowly pulled away, the satin lining is removed too. Lint and dust, conicans, as we say in, in Gaelic, uh, are, um, fall from the time-pressed seams and are swept away. Smaller pieces of fabric are saved for making quilts. Larger pieces of material are folded and saved in boxes near her mother's foot-operated Singer sewing machine. These pieces will be used for repairing the knees of my brother's leggings. Little goes in the garbage. The pieces of fabric to be used for my coat are carefully placed on the kitchen table so they can be observed, remeasured, cut down again, viewed in a different way, and then reassembled to make a more serviceable item. My mother had the inherent gift and skill to mentally and visually rotate each piece of pattern in her mind before actually cutting the fabric. Here, Janet's sneaking over on the side. Um, before actually cutting the fabric so that the right sides of the material properly faced each other. Like the fur on a cat, the nap of material has to slant in the same direction or the difference will be visible, even from a distance, and other stitchers might to one another about the poor quality of the work. My mother was very particular in her sewing methods. When she sewed, the current of the nap never flowed in the wrong direction. Additionally, she would wisely reverse each piece of material to hide the wear spots, creating the perception of a new garment. She pinned and basted pieces together for my dress rehearsal, standing high in the center of the kitchen table and getting weak from the strange height, I modeled my mother's creation for me. She directed me, turn uh, a little more, okay, to the other side now, okay, turn around this way. Then she took another look at how well the coat fit me. Sometimes she took a tuck in here, a dart in there, or trimmed a tad off the sleeves or hem. Then, like an artist, she stood back and admired her own handiwork. <clears throat> she decided with me if it was a comfortable fit, and most importantly, if it was serviceable enough to last another winter. Then my mother sat in at her mother's sewing machine. She sewed the pieces back together again and created the same coat, only smaller. She had found a practical solution that was now a good fit for me. Then she decided it needed a little embellishment. I'm just going to show this little picture here. I quilted it. Where am I? I quilted a little uh, picture of me standing on the kitchen table with my almost finished coat on it. Um, then she decided that it needed a little embellishment, an elegant touch to celebrate our success. It would need a little fur collar. The recycled thread in the yellow bowl would then be used to sew the, co the collar on, the hem, the buttons onto my new coat. Together, my mother and I looked through the forbidden pages of the T. Eaton's catalog. We, oh, that should be we instead of well, we eeny meeny miny mode over which little fur collar would I be privileged enough to have on my new coat. My mother was careful to guide me in the size, in a size and appropriate price as it could not exceed the baby bonus amount 
that was allotted to me for one month. I remember the joyous anticipation I experienced while awaiting that COD parcel to come into the post office on Front Street in Mabo and the calamity that caused a delay before it could be attached. It came inside a little plastic bag, stapled and then wrapped in brown paper with my mother's name on it. It had the familiar blue paper on the front signifying the company. It had come from Eaton's store all the way from Halifax, which seemed so far away to me then. The collar was very white and quite fluffy, although it was short fur. I hoped it was not a real bunny at one time, but that thought faded as it became closer to being on my coat. My mother squinted, um, my mother squinted to thread the needle and asked me to help. Her eyes were weaker then and she needed help as she was not a well woman, but never stopped being a very hard working mother. She would often say, if you will just do the walking, I'll do the rest. So I would go around the house to get whatever items she need and she would sit and do the work. I was close by recording everything, recording her every move. It was she who taught me a lesson that I live by to this day, and that is, if I'm going to do something, I do it well, or I don't do it at all. So I would go around the house and get, uh, okay, I read that. Uh, so my mother sewed the precious little fur collar on my new teal wool coat. The collar had pure white satin underlining and a little elastic loop to slip over the cloth covered button. My new winter coat with the little fur collar was finished. I was thrilled. Everyone said, I suppose your mother made your coat. I experienced such pride as I walked through the troops of more than 50 children on Back Street. I had on my new coat with the little fur collar softly touching on my chin. My mother had made it for me. My siblings walked beside me, all wearing their own new coats. I wonder now, did she know how excited I was? Did I tell her, or like children do, just smile and smile? The richness of that gorgeous color still brings a warm feeling over me and continues to be my favorite color today. I do not have that coat anymore, nor do I have my mother. She was a great cook and a self-taught seamstress, but she was a hero to her children in many other ways. Today, I feel her presence when I wrap up in my teal-colored blanket or eat some pumpkin preserves. I learned to sew and cook, but I could never match the quality of her preserves. Recently, my little daughter threaded a needle for me because I was squinting to do it myself. I was making something for her just like my mother had done for me. Eaton seemed to be so far away to me then, and it really wasn't. Winter seemed to be more fun then, but they really weren't, I suppose. I just don't go out there and stay all day in wet clothes. The little fur collar seemed to be the most expensive item in the world, but it wasn't. My mother's pumpkin preserves seemed to be the best tasting dish I ever ate. And my mother seemed to be the hardest working mother in the world, and that I'm really sure of. I do not recall my mother ever having another new coat. Later in her life, she became very ill and subsequently died when I was 20, leaving young children to mourn her loss. I wish my kids had known her. Today as an adult and as a mother myself, I wonder if she went without a coat so that I would have one. I do all the same things myself now. I save buttons. I cut away secondhand clothes to make new items. And I sacrifice for my children. I am very innovative. I have to be. There have been few luxuries. I have my mother to thank me for teaching me how to be able to survive. And here's a little, what is that? A little picture I, Quilted. I can't seem to hold it the right way. Of, yeah, just a little quilted picture of uh, me, I guess, in a coat. Well, there now. 
There you go. We'll go come back to you in a minute. But I just wanted to tell you that we had the the tart in for 30 minutes and uh, Sharon checked it. It's not ready in, in my oven. So we put it in for another 10 to 12 minutes. She knows by the look of it how it should be. So you guys test your own apples and your own pastry to see if uh, how that works for you. So how did you like and enjoy that reading of that one story, one of the stories? Oh, lots of little messages here, Janelda. Yeah. Beautiful story, memories that are shared. They have some similar memories yeah. from their mom and yeah. stuff like that. And um, we're going to get back to Danelda in, in, a, in a few minutes. I'm just going to do a little bit of something here with you that I, I just want to share uh, my week with you. I want to give you this. And we will in a second. We will in a second. We're just going to do this part first, and then we'll come back to Danelda and we'll share something great. Um, isn't she a great writer? She really has a gift, uh, uh, for sure, and it needs to be shared, and I think it would be amazing. I know. Hi, Danette. <laughs> it's a great story. So I, I just wanted to, to share with you the, the week, this past week, and then we'll go back to enjoying uh, some more conversation with Danelda. But on Monday of this week, I went uh, to Antigonish to have lunch with uh, 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 my sister and um, a couple of cousins that were passing through, I spoke 10 of us or whatever, and I'm sitting talking to one and uh, I turn around and sitting beside me was this gentleman. Uh, he had ball cap on, he had sunglasses on, and he had his mask on. He had white hair, and I thought, oh, somebody must be my sister Bernice's, a, a friend that that came by, and so I'm looking at him, and he uh, he takes his cap off, and he takes his glasses off, and he takes his mask off, and I realize that it is my brother, who I hadn't seen for more than three years. He lives in Michigan, and. I, I could hardly contain myself. I, I just put my head on his chest and I cried and I cried and I cried. It was a cherished, cherished moment. And he and his wife, Rita, came home because, uh, of course, to visit family, but for the, to see the launch of my cookbook. And I'm just, it, it's been, it's, it, it's been a wonderful week. And he and his wife and my sister Bernice had, had been here in the house for this past week. They left this morning to go over to Manadou in Catalonia near Lewisburg to spend a few days with uh, Rita's relatives over there. But they're coming back for, for the book launch. And uh, so I'm very, very blessed and lucky. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just such an emotional moment that I, I, I don't think I'll ever forget. So... Um, I've done lots of baking this week with them in the house and just sitting around and talking and just sometimes just not talking, just being together was just so wonderful. So anyway, I also talked to you a little bit about Lisa uh, Stonehouse, who was here from Ontario, who brought the dishcloths. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, last night, I had dinner at uh, the Red Shoe Pub with Terry and, and Bob uh, Olmstead from Thunder Bay, Ontario, who were, she's a big follower. He said, not so much, I don't. She's busy watching you every Sunday. <laughs> but they wanted to, to ha come out and have dinner with Cecil and I, so we went in the Red Shoe Pub last night. So just the night before that, we all went out to uh, the distillery uh, the Glenora Distillery, which is just north of here, about 20 minutes. And so Cecil and I are celebrating 50 years of marriage in November. My brother that came home, him and his wife, were also married the same year and in November. So they're married 50 years. Uh, my sister Minnie, uh, married to Alec McMaster, 
they're they're celebrating their anniversary uh, on the same day as ours, but they're married 56 years. And uh, of course, my uh, my sister Bernice was there as well with an, with our cousin Anne, and uh, so we all uh, eight of us were at this table at the distillery and had a beautiful meal, and we were toasting one another for for uh, all of those years together, and we had a lot of laughs, and it was just everything was just so nice just to share that with one another. Uh, back to the lady that I had. Uh, Lunch, uh, dinner with last night at the Red Shoe. She uh, she gave me a, a couple of little gifts, but one of the things she gave me was this little uh, hand carved uh, bird that her brother makes. Uh, I'm not sure where her brother li uh, lives, but I do have uh, the information about the bird. But they're called comfort birds, and uh, every one is kind of a little bit different because they're handcrafted. And uh, I just you know just something that you can hold and almost like a worry bead or whatever it just gives you great comfort it fits in the palm of your hand and uh, there was, there's quite a story with it but isn't that just such nice craftsmanship I love it and uh, as well the other thing that I wanted to share with you oh at that Terry back to the people that were uh, talking about anniversaries the people that um, had dinner with last night at the Red Shoe. Today is their 46th wedding anniversary and uh, they're both retired and they're on their way today to go over to Prince Edward Island to celebrate as well. Just beautiful people. You're all beautiful people. Um, our daughter Margie, she traveled all the way uh, across Canada, it took two weeks. At, she went back out to Fort McMurray to pick up her her SUV and she drove it across Canada, had a great, not so great encounter with two moose, but she was able to stop with each one of them were right on each headlight. It was very, very stressful, but she was kept safe. And, uh, but she had two wonderful weeks on the road, taking pictures of all of those, in all of those beautiful provinces and just how Canada is so beautiful. Um, the other thing is uh, the cookbook is selling like crazy and I want to thank you all for purchasing. I really appreciate it. Uh, they've already ordered a reprint, so that's pretty awesome. And I already told you about Kevin Fowley uh, and the little taste uh, wooden spoons that uh, he made and gave to us this week as a gift. Eileen McDonald. I didn't get to meet Eileen, but she was home. Uh, she, her her mom is from here, and she uh, she left a gift for me because when she was home, her grandmother died, and she she wanted to to meet up with me, but she never get a chance. But she gave me this hand towel that she made. Ontario loves tunes and wooden spoons. Thank you very much, Eileen. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our son, uh, our son Gordy works uh, out in the oil sands of Alberta and, uh, there is, um, a, a gentleman, a coworker that he works with him. His name is Jacques Godin and he's from, um, Hot Packetville in New Brunswick, but just a great coworker. And he sent me, uh, two containers of his, maple syrup that he makes and also he sent me some of his homegrown uh, garlic uh, a whole bunch of, of garlic cloves so thank you very much Jacques I really appreciate it and I'm glad that you are a, a, a good friend to uh, to Gordy out there on site it's hard to be away from home but it's uh, I really appreciate you doing that and sending this and like a true gentleman or a true male this parcel came, no note in it. <laughs> there was no note in it. I was thinking, well, who is this? And then there was a return address. That was it. And so Gordy then texted me and I uh, said, did you get the parcel from my buddy? And I said, oh, he's your buddy. <laughs> but in, like men just don't think that's necessary. I'm just going to send her some of my maple syrup and some of my garlic. <laughs> so there you go. So. Thank you, Jacques. And you'll probably be embarrassed that I mentioned you on the air, but that's okay. 
I wanted to tell you about the Cape Breton tour. The Cape Breton tour was sold out and there are now two seats available because somebody had a minor mishap injury. Mm -hmm. And so there are two seats available. If anybody out there wanted to still get in on the tour, there's two seats available. And it's going to be a wonderful, a wonderful tour. And here, I can't remember to give you all the details, but there's the, the phone number and the email, sandygroup at ns.sympatico.ca or sandytraveltours.ca, uh, you will uh, find find that on the web if, you, if you're interested in doing that. And uh, last but not least, the, the timer, there's a minute left in the timer. It gives me a one minute warning and Sharon will check on that. And uh, Mitchell and Laura, I wanted to share this with you, but uh, as, as you know, they lived just three doors down from us and, uh, and th with the three children. And uh, they have made a big life decision and they have moved. They've sold their house in the, in the last month and they've moved to Lower South River, which is near Antikonish, for Mitchell's work. And uh, Laura is gonna be working there full time. I will miss the children dearly, but it's one hour away. And, uh, and that will be fine. So they sold their house and I went over there the other day and I had, uh, it was strange going there. I just had to pick something up. But lo and behold, I do know uh, the, the, uh, the girl that is, is uh, the, the couple that is there, they're both chefs. So I have to convince her or both of them to come on the show. Uh -huh. And they have three and a half year old twins. So I'll, I'll be over there, no doubt. <laughs> but uh, anyway, welcome to them. Uh, she is Becky and uh, she's, she's lovely. And I am just uh, so excited that there is an, a new family coming in there. And I'm only an hour away from Mitchell. And uh, so anybody over there who needs any, a good real estate fella, you can check with Mitchell. I think he will, uh, he will fill the bill. He works at the Viewpoint office on Main Street in Antigonish. And he doesn't know that I'm doing any of this today. And he'll probably say, Mom, you, what are you doing that for? But moms just do that. You know what I mean? So anyway, I, I, uh, the, what, what's the status off, off, the, uh, off the tart? It's just about ready, but we gave it about another 10 minutes. I have a convection oven, so my oven cooks a little bit um, quicker than others. So we gave it about another 10 minutes. Oh, you, you, uh, another 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, that's great. You know, there's, what's great about that is that, okay, can you shut that teapot off? Sure. Before it starts to boil, if it hasn't already. <laughs> um, so that's all right. You guys adjusted. So a lot of the people on here, Sharon, are people who bake, uh, maybe not with me. Yes. But after the fact, yep. and they just want to see how it's done. Will I like to make that item or not? And and then they'll they'll make it later in the week. So it's a this is a good test run for how long it's going to take to cook. So right now it was in 30 minutes. We put it in for another 12. Yep. So that's 42. And now you're saying another 10, say, you're thinking? Yeah. I'd say, yeah, around 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes. So with a regular oven. So when she quoted the recipe, she was dealing with her own convection oven. So those out there who have a, a convection oven, you know that it's going to take a lot less time than what we're dealing with right now. Yeah. How do you tell when it's done? Take, take a cake tester or, an, or a sharp knife and go through your apple. And if it slides right through and it's soft, it's, it's, done. it's done. And the you, you want to have your pastry a nice brown, golden, yeah. golden brown. And, uh, you know, that, that should give you a good idea. So anyway, I want to turn the conversation back. There's, there's, lots, there's lots to share when Nelda and I get together. I call her Nelda, Danelda. <laughs> and um, one second with Nelda, does it freeze well? Question. I've never froze it. We're, so many of you ask that so often. It does How does it freeze? Whatever. <laughs> I'm the same way. If I'm making something, I'm making it because somebody's going to eat it. And I never, the only thing that I think I freeze sometimes if I make 
a whole raft of molasses cookies or something. I might freeze them. I never freeze my baking. It's gone or I give it away. Yeah. So we're poor people to ask because she's a Cape Ratner, same as I'm a Cape Ratner. That's one thing that we do. We, we give it away or we eat it right away. I have three boys. It doesn't make it past yeah. an hour. Yeah. yeah, see? Yeah, so that's, that's true. Uh, my tart is leaking everywhere. I lost track to you guys because uh, I was on the show, so I just put it in tin pie plate. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You should put it on a cookie sheet. Uh, uh, yeah, when the you're, apples yeah. are going to leach out. They're going to leak out. And yeah. one of the things I think that we might have forgotten to do, so because put, a little, uh, put a little bit of flour on the bottom of the, the, uh, the tart, the the, tart the pastry. that would you know make it thick in the sauce a little bit. Uh, so someone is, is there, there's, these people are so great. They, they, they give one another the tips and stuff like that. So this one woman said apple pies freeze really well. So it shouldn't be a problem to freeze that. Yeah. I would just make sure you're in a good freezer bag, you know, that you're, you're using one of those extra large ones for this. Welcome Sharon. So happy that you are doing this galette from Christine McKenzie. McCush, McQuish, I'm not how to say that. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go to Denelda, to Nelda, that I call her Nelda. <laughs> That's my pet name for her. And, uh, I, I just want to, uh, tell you a little bit uh, about Nelda first before I talk to her. Um, she makes quilts. She makes memory quilts. People... If somebody has passed away, for example, uh, and uh, like for example, I've seen many of her quilts that were were um, you know gifted, and uh, they were made up of T-shirts that people wore, or even children uh, you've lost children, and and put it together into a beautiful uh, quilt that you know will bring joy to the family and how to remember it. They are, uh, her quilts are, are random uh, shapes and sizes and a real kind of a patchwork quilt. Uh, and she loves working with wool, of course. So anyway, I'm going to send it back over here to Nelda. She's got a few things that she's done and, and uh, is, has brought to share with us today. And uh, let's see what, what she can bring to the table. up and put you there within full view. How's that? Oh, it's good. Um, Sorry. First of all, I brought you a little gift. You brought me a little gift. Yes, thank you for having me on the oh. show. Oh my God, I can only imagine what this is. Did, no, did you bake something? Nothing this morning. Mm. Everybody knows what they are. Okay. Look. Nelda is famous for her oat cakes. <laughs> she makes the most beautiful oat cakes. They're all the same size, and they're all not like my rugged, ragged ones that I make. And she has tartan up the yin yang, and she puts a little bow on every one, and so that, oh and she rolls them out with the rolled oats as instead of flour she puts rolled oats when she rolls it out and yeah. they absolutely fall apart and i do believe Donelda, because t today once the um the pie is done and if it's too hot to serve with ice cream and cream look what we can have okay. yeah an oat okay. cake and uh thank you as always beautiful baker and I got this dish in Bedeck the other day. It's in, in, in a little store nearby the Chinese food place, but I don't remember the name. Oh, that's but, nice. Isn't uh, that nice dish? I thought you always make a nice display of your... Oh, my God, you're giving me that dish? Yeah. What are you going to think? Oh. Are you going to take it back? Oh, my God. Oh. Aw, you're Look. so nice. Who wouldn't give you things? Oh, thank you. You God, I love it. I knew you would. As soon as I saw oh, it, I said, I was oh. just, I thought you were giving me the old kings. <laughs> no, you get them too. <laughs> they are delicious and to die for. Okay, I'll put it on my table. 
Okay, Thank so what do, I, what do I do? I guess I was being a bit presumptuous, thinking the book would be a hit, so I had bookmarks made. Nice. <laughs> Look, aren't they beautiful? Snows, printing mm -hmm. for Hawkesbury. In Hawkesbury, and they're laminated, and they're just gorgeous. Mary Janet's shoes on the front. <laughs> so when people, if people want to order your book, uh, yeah. they can order it on Amazon, correct? Yeah. It's the only one I'm aware of, but yeah. Yeah, and but do Freezins on their the publisher's uh, page, their their website, do they sell the books that they have coming out? I thought that they did as well. Actually, I don't even know. Haley, are you on there? Can you tell us? Uh, yes, I believe so. I don't want to turn my phone on, but I yeah, think... we'll 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 work that out. And yeah. we've got some great people on here. If I'm talking yeah, about a yeah. website or whatever, they they're they're right. on it and the, and they'll publish it in the comments and it's not like me who was gonna mail the wool blanket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I do want to explain. I I uh, got these cards made, and uh, they're they have the recipe in them. I keep saying I'm gonna use them as uh, as uh, invitations for my next wedding. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, the recipe, there's the, the picture, and uh, and you just saw the oat cakes. I didn't plan that, beautiful. but that's the way it is. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. They're just beautiful. But anyway, the recipe is there, and... Uh, use my recipe. Don't use Nelda's no, recipe. No, use my <laughs> recipe. Mine is better. <laughs> and so anyway, I, I do want to say that everybody's oven is different. Well, we're experiencing that today. Yeah. So I used to put them in at 325 in another oven that I had, but now I have to put them in at 350. So, yeah. you know, anybody who bakes knows this stuff. And when you go to put the dough on the, the counter, use lots and lots and lots of oatmeal, like cups. Yeah. So if people don't know that. Uh, so anyway, I have those for sale. I... Uh, I, I, I so so you you have them for sale. So if somebody wanted them who doesn't yeah. live around here, people have ordered them already, and people have come to the house. Yeah, and I've got like I'm just thinking of maybe a Christmas gift to buy locally if you don't, can't get out. Yeah, the store. Anybody who loves Cape Breton, and you know this is this is my heart. And she, she got all of these uh, uh, aprons, and she made a tartan heart on every on every one and single and one of sewed them. the Here. them on there. And I, and Isn't I, that beautiful? Just the, the, her work. And I have tons of kids' ones. And I waited so long for the book to uh, finally come out that I just had lots of time to do so this. So what stuff. are you selling the aprons for? $15. $15. Yeah, I also wanted to just show this. There's a little story in, in, in my book about my father. And uh, it's just... Uh, I loved the house that we were in on Back Street, but then we moved out of there. But anyway, my here, my brother Jerome, um, he uh, has our father's uh, medals, and there's a picture of them in the book. You know, you know yes. Jerome, wonderful yes. man, just and, a wonderful man. And manual of prayers. This is when her father was in the Second yeah. World War. So look at that tiny little book. And what's really cool about it is that uh, my father, my father's mother, wrote in it to him before he went away to war. That's our grandmother. That's our grandmother. Yeah. Wow. And on the back of it is where he put a, uh, what was the nearest relative? He put Mrs. Miss Annie Beaton, who was my mother, but they weren't married at the at time. At that time. So just in that little. In that little book, there's a just to show you the size of it. Uh, there's pictures of it in the book. In the just book, that that one little story. I used to watch him making the fire in the morning. There's a beautiful story about her as a little girl, uh, you know, watching her father down through the the little grate, grate, and and in the in her house. And his the one of the books, one of the stories is called "My Father's Morning Ritual." And uh, it's just him, you know, making the fa the fire, awesome. folding his socks up over the underwear before he put his pants uh, on and putting the kindling in the fire and, and before any of the children got up. And uh, 
uh, him praying, kneeling down and praying before anybody got up, but she used to watch uh, through the uh, the little grate and watch watch him do that. So it's a beautiful story uh, of that, and such an a, such great writing. It's, it really makes you imagine what the the scene looked like. And uh, what else do you want to know? Oh, just uh, th that's one of your quilts. If you want to, well, this is this is what I like to do. I'm always checking out kids' clothes. Oh. <laughs> but, but anyway, I like to go to Worth the Weight in Hawkesbury. Is that uh, mm -hmm. on there? And uh, so if I see something, I don't like to promote beer commercials and that, you know, that kind of thing. But if I see something, especially something that's got something Cape Bretony on it, or especially for little boys, uh, the, this kind of a thing, or for little girls, another you know different Fantastic. and so then what I do uh, you know just to make it more complicated for myself <laughs> is I take all the uh, I take the you know like this would be one t-shirt and I put iron-on interfacing on the back of it so that it's sturdier than just the t-shirt mm -hmm. material so you take you have custom orders basically yeah when lots it, of times yeah and uh, that keeps me out of trouble in the winter yeah that's but anyway, this is kind of what it turns out to be like. Wow. And then, of course, my heart is on here somewhere. Yeah, it was on the other corner. It was on the other corner. Was it? Yeah, oh, up here. Yeah. There, it is. there it is. So uh, everybody, uh, I'll be sending my granddaughter pictures of uh, what I'm making. And she knows when she gets the picture of the heart that it's done. Yes. That's the signature. That's the signature. So anyway, I don't know. I have a couple of things at my house. I I uh, got a few cups made, and I can't really afford to do a whole lot more. But I did order a hundred books. About twenty five of those are gone already. My uh, neighbor just. So how do they took reach you? What's your email address for the book? Um, if you wanted to mail it out, for example. Um. Donelda Mac at hotmail.com. And how much are the books? I put two bookmarks, bookmarkers, and two cards in each one, and that's $35. $35 plus postage. Yeah. Okay. A book, a book this size, I mailed one last week, and it, you know what I mean, it fit in the, in the, the slot, slot. Yeah. And it was less than five dollars. Yes. Yeah. So, so I don't know if that's approximately five dollars for for yeah. Mr. Stanley. So yeah. Well, what is your email address again? Donelda, D O N E L D A, Mac, mm -hmm. at hotmail dot com. There now. Okay. The weaving of my tartan heart by Donelda Mac Donnell. and uh, and wasn't that beautiful? And there's so many nice stories in there. There's ones about. Our the square, grandmother. our grandmother, as she shared some stories about her grandmother, as told to her by our aunt, who's now ninety. Yeah, she's 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 uh, in uh, the R.K. McDonald guest home in in Antikinish, and uh, but as told to her probably twenty years ago, she she shared lots of stories. So anyway, uh, the important I know. thing is to listen. It's just to listen to the to the elderly is message yeah, from Nelda. Right so down. anyway, we're going to get back now. The tea is has is long since gotten too strong, I'd Ooh. say. <laughs> but I wanted to show you the apple galette here that Sharon took out of the oven. Oh my god, it smells amazing. So it does have a little bit of liquid that come out. But, but not you, a lot. No, you know. if you would have put a little bit of flour on the bottom before the apples, that would have soft it up a little bit. But you're still going to get a little bit, depending on how juicy the apples yeah. are. Yeah. I think it's grand. It smells divine. So we are going to do the sinful thing. And we're going to cut a hot piece of this galette and maybe have an oat cake with it. So, uh, Sharon, I'm, I'm just going to get you to do the honors. There's a knife there, and I'll get the ice cream, and I'm going to put the, uh, the sauce um, 
in the microwave to warm it up. And uh, thanks, Arlene Cameron. That's another first cousin of ours is Arlene Cameron. And she just uh, put Danelle Mac at Hotmail.com on there. Oh, good. So we'll watch this caterer at work. <laughs> and uh, I'll put the, the sauce. Oh, some of those things they are hard to get into. <laughs> they do. There we go. So, that's what it looks like. And your caramel sauce. Oh, that's what's in the microwave. Whoop! <laughs> I'll salvage it. sauce look divine okay oh my god now Sharon if you go into that top drawer there uh, on the right yeah there's the little forks kind of yep three if you get three of those and where are we I'm gonna get you to hold this up sure and look at mama's yeah. Sauce. Was that Maggie Ann's or was that your mother's? Uh, this was Maggie Ann's. Maggie Ann's. And how about I put a little bit? Oh yeah, you have to. I think we need a little bit more on there, on that ice cream. Okay, you give that one to Danelda. And there's, oh, like really? Yum, there yum, yum. That's what it looks like. <laughs> That's for you, Sharon. Wow. Yum. Oh, my God. Isn't that smell delicious? Here we go, folks. Oh, the spoon. Oh. Yeah. I love that spoon. <laughs> I have two. I have two of these. One time I was getting some stuff off Amazon mm -hmm. and there's, there's that one, which you use for decorating a plate with, uh, for desserts. Yeah. And I think there's another size. Yeah. There's a littler one. Oh, wow. There's a, another tiny one. Okay. I don't even know what they're called. I can't even tell you, but it, they're so cute. I've never seen them before. Drizzlers. I don't know. I, I, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Some kind of a drizzlers. Okay. I'm going to take you over to the table. Hi, everybody. Uh, is the apple galette recipe? No, it's not in my cookbook. Anything that I put in the cookbook was um, pretty much everything that I had done on the show up until maybe sometime in May. Actually, there were some others as well that I put in there. Um, and, and we'll... Uh... So here we are. Here were some people. You're going to have to bear with me for a minute while I take this down. Not working. 
I don't know what I did wrong. This one here is too. Okay, oh, no, hold on a second. I gotta do this. I will do it there. And there. <laughs> I'm telling you, my technical skills are. Now see if we can get all three of us at the table. There is Nelda. Right there. Hi, Nelda. Hi. <laughs> Drizzle. Oh my God, see, this is what they do. They already found the spoons on Google. Of course they did. On, on, on Amazon. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And there's Sharon. And now... <laughs> Volume 2. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do the taste test like I do. So we all have our little teacups. And we have that. And we all have our galette, apple galette. I, I just love the rustic idea in all of this. It's awesome. Mm. So, and with Mama's caramel sauce, oh, which yeah. is in there, yeah, it's just a nice little addition. Okay. Mm. Mm. So good. What a treat. Oh my God. Mmm. I want to trace, taste the crust on the edge. Mmm. Oh my God, it's so good. Never say never. Ha ha. I know. <laughs> no, there won't be a volume two. I don't have enough recipes for a volume two. Mm. Not yet. You don't have enough recipes, but you might get there. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. Exactly. Aw. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, here we are with the end of another week. So coming up this week, of course, is a big excitement next Saturday with the launch uh, at the St. Peter's Parish Hall. Have no idea how many people are gonna be there. Uh, you know, we'll ha we ha we have to go with the, the COVID protocols and people wearing masks and all of that. There's gonna be, the publisher's going to have um, McIntyre Purcell out of Lunenburg are the publishers and they're gonna have their book, the, the books there to, to sell. And I'll be there at a table for any, uh, Oh my God, somebody just got her cookbook at the door. <laughs> it was just delivered. Isn't that funny? And um, so we'll, I'll be there to sign it. And if you're from the area and you're going to be around and you already got a cookbook, bring it and, and, and I'll, I'll sign that. Uh, it starts at 2 o'clock until 5. The kids are going to be there to sing. Margie and Don are going to be there to play the fiddle. Our granddaughter Anna is going to be there to sing. And... Um, Sharon is going to be there with a, a, a little goodie and a cup of tea. Uh, and, uh, you know, if anybody is, is, is going to be passing through. So, obviously, there's going to have to be an entrance and an exit. Uh, and uh, I don't know how long we can get to, to mull around. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm so glad you joined me for uh, your regular little Sunday visit right here in my home. And it was funny last, uh, I don't know what you guys think, but my kitchen and living room, they're just kind of compact and small. And so uh, Terry, uh, who we had dinner with last night, we brought her back to the house for, for tea afterwards. And she was imagining a, a much larger area, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in no negative way. She just thought that it was much bigger. And I guess the camera makes that happen, but it's pretty small. And... Uh, but anyway, slancha to you too, Christine McKenzie. Thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of your week. You know you matter to me, and you're so much a part of my every day. And uh, I'm so glad to know each and every one of you. And as I always say, love one another because I love you. Bye-bye, everybody. Um... Hey, hi, it's me, Charlie, 
Um, if, if, if you, you like, like Grandma's video, video, video make sure, sure to, to give it a like and subscribe. Give it a like and subscribe.